parents, maybe you can help them out before we begin, all right? So let me pray briefly, and then we're going to dig into God's word. We're going to be looking at Luke 11, verses 1 through 4. Luke 11, 1 through 4. Remember, we're in our 22 days of prayer. Today is day number eight. We are eight days in with, if I can do my math, eight minus 22 equals, somebody help me out, 14, I think. We roughly have 14 days left, but we're eight days in, and we're trusting that God is going to be drawing us to pray to him as a church family and pray to him as his sons and daughters individually. So let me pray, and then we'll get started. Lord, I just ask now that the word of God would do its work in our hearts. Jesus, we are, we are part of the Father's family, and you've made us part of this family. And we praise you for that, Jesus. We ask now for the Holy Spirit's help to be our teacher, to take the inspired word of God and to lead us to you, Father, the God of the word. Be praised now. Teach us to pray, Lord. And more so than just the instruction, Lord, I pray you would apply it to each one of our hearts, each one of our families, and, and as a family. And it's in your name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Now, if you're familiar, if you've been to trade school or if you've taken any um, courses at a, let's say a community college or at a university or perhaps in other different um, educational environments, 101 courses are unique in the, in, the, in the fact that they were designed for anyone to take. Um, they, they were designed to, to kind of teach people at an introdu introductory level, whatever the topic or whatever the course that's being taught. So a 101 course is, is just a foundational course that anybody can take. And it doesn't take any kind of like prerequisites or pre-required courses to take before you take that 101 course. It's designed for all students, regardless of your major, and re regardless of whatever stage of, of college you're in, right? Or whatever stage you're at. Well, our passage for this morning is very much like this in that it's instruction for all of us as Christians and, and all of us as a church family. It's, it's designed at a very fundamental entry level way to teach us to pray as a family. But with saying that, although it's foundational and it's very simple, right? It's 101, it is not easy. And I, I want to be clear when I say that, that prayer, although it's communion with God, as I mentioned last week, that leads to the advancement of his kingdom, it's simple, but yet it's not easy. So I don't want to convey this morning, maybe, maybe this morning you're like, man, Pastor Scott's going to be teaching on something I already know. Well, the inter interesting thing about this passage is that it may be something that we know cognitively, but do we know it as something that we live out? And it's interesting. Um, I was listening to one pastor who's a prominent pastor, and basically he was telling, telling his story of how a publishing company came to him and they were like, hey, we want you to write a book on prayer. And it startled him at first. And then as he began to kind of go along with the dialogue on the phone with the publishing company, he was like, well, why don't you ask so-and-so who was a more prominent gentleman? And then the people on the phone began to snicker. They said, well, we already asked and they declined. And then anyway, he gives them five other people and all of them decline. And finally, he's the one that ends up writing the book on prayer. I use that illustration to say prayer is something that for the rest of our lives we're growing in. None of us have a graduate degree in prayer. None of us have, maybe I'll say it this way, have graduated from the school of prayer. So prayer, although in this passage, is simple, 
it's not easy and it's something we'll grow in. So let me give you my main idea, my main idea up front. And it's this, it's the Lord's prayer is what we would call a priority prayer. The Lord's prayer is a priority prayer. And we're going to see that from Luke chapter 11, verses one through four. So if you would, maybe we can have someone, Levi, I don't know if you have the passage available, but I'd like for us to read it. Would you mind, do you have it near you? Could you pull it up and maybe even paste it in the chat and read it? And then I'm going to quickly move through our points. Luke chapter 11, verses one through four. If you would follow along with me, everyone, or with Levi. Did you want me to read it, Scott? Yep, if you don't mind. Okay, okay no, no problem, no problem. Now, Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation. Amen. So prayer 101, according to Jesus, based out of Luke 11, 1 through 4. Prayer 101. Well, the first thing that we see from this passage when it comes to prayer is we see that prayer is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. We see Jesus here in verse one, modeling prayer. And actually, when you read through the book of Luke, what you see in the book of Luke is you see 20 different references of Jesus either praying, teaching on prayer, or talking about prayer. For, for Jesus, prayer was a lifestyle. Prayer was something that was not just kind of pinned to his to his. I guess, corkboard to say that he did it, it was something that he lived out. And prayer is something that we're to live out, we're to model, we're to live out. It's, it's communion with the Father. And so prayer 101, listen, is not just bowing your head and saying a brief, a brief prayer before you eat dinner. It's not just kind of crossing your hands like this and praying before you go to bed. No, prayer is a lifestyle. Prayer is communing with God that, that never stops because prayer emphasizes relationship. And so that's the first thing we see when it comes to prayer 101, according to Luke 11, is that prayer is a lifestyle and Jesus, our savior, modeled it. I mentioned last week about the leader of the Jerusalem church, James, he was known as camel knees. And the reason why, as I mentioned, is he, they said he spent so much time on his knees praying. I think of also another guy in church history, George Mueller. They said George Mueller prayed through the Bible several times and he did it on his knees. And the reason why he did it that way was because he would pray what he was reading back to the father. In essence, prayer is a lifestyle, and I, and I think Jesus shows us that, and he really influences this, his disciples because it leads us to the point where they go, hey, teach us to pray. We see that it's important. John's boys, um, John the Baptist, I'm referring to John the Baptist, they had a prayer that they prayed, and they prayed together, and now Jesus' disciples are saying, teach us to pray. So one, it is a lifestyle. Two, prayer 101, according to Jesus in Luke 11, it is, it, is a com it, is a, it is a community lifestyle. It's a community lifestyle. So one, it's a lifestyle. Two, it's a community lifestyle. Now, one of the things I want you to see in these verses, for example, if you have your Bibles and you're looking at verse one, notice the pronouns, the plural pronouns. For example, 
the disciples say in verse one, Lord, teach us to pray. They don't say, Lord, teach me to pray. It says, teach us to pray. Now notice verse three and notice the plural pronoun again. Give us, this is Jesus talking, give us each day our daily bread. And then look at verse four and forgive us our sins. And then also in verse four, it says, and lead us not into temptation. What's my point here? The point is Jesus was teaching not an individual per se to pray. He was teaching a family, a group of followers to pray. And this is one of the things that I think we really miss in the church in that prayer is to be a priority and prayer is to be not just an, a person, but a people communing with God. So it is a community lifestyle and convergence. I don't know how this will look for us in the sense of I feel really strong and, and the pastors feel really strong that God is calling us together as a family to pray. We don't know how it's going to look, but we're trusting that the Holy Spirit is going to do this in us. Because even as you look at our passage here, the disciples, again, are not saying, Lord, teach me to pray. They're saying, teach us to pray. And the major emphasis, there was a guy, his last name is Franklin. He wrote a book called In the Walls Will Be Shaken. And part of his thesis that was basically put into a book was that in the New Testament, when you see passages on prayer, you see them primarily in the context of the community, where the community is praying. And I believe there's something to that, that as a church, we're to pray. And so during this 22 days, we want to give emphasis to this, and we're getting ready to do it here in a moment as just one small expression. And then later in our announcements, Levi's is going to share about one other thing we're going to try this week to emphasize us praying together because the Lord is calling us. He's teaching us to pray together. And briefly, I want to encourage not only us praying together as a church family, but in our homes, praying together as a family. I want to add uh, parents, guardians, perhaps you're a grandparent and maybe you have custody of your kid or perhaps, perhaps you're just fostering and you're a foster parent. I, I want to encourage you. God desires for us to commune with him and to lead our families in prayer. So I just want to encourage you to, to walk in God's will in that. He will help you. It may be hard, but he and his spirit, the Holy Spirit, who is God, will help you. All right, so the two things we've seen so far is that Prayer 101 is a lifestyle, and Prayer 101 is a community lifestyle. It is a family lifestyle. It's something God is calling us to do. Lastly, Prayer 101, according to Luke 11, 1 through 4, and the Lord's Prayer, it focuses on, number three, God and his priorities. It focuses on God and his priorities. This is something that personally I have had to relearn and relearn. And just admittedly, it, it has taken me, I've been a Christian for, geez, since 1995 is when I first came to know the Lord. Um, it's taken me this long to really understand how God is calling me to pray. And in particular, when I look at this passage, what he's calling me and what he's calling us as a family and what he's calling each of us as individuals to do is to prioritize his fatherhood and to prioritize his priorities, meaning praying the things that are a priority to him. Now, it doesn't negate us praying for in everything by prayer and petition, the small things. God cares about the small things. but. In a culture like ours, in a self-centered culture, in a culture where in the West we center our lives around ourselves, we put us at the center of everything, our prayers tend to focus around us and not God and his priorities. So the point number three here, this Lord's Prayer 
focuses on the father and his priorities. So let me really quick run through what they are. The first priority is on his fatherhood. Verse two, Jesus said, this then is how you should pray. Our father. Our father here is his father. The father in heaven. Jesus is father. Jesus is father is our father. He's our heavenly father. And there's two primary emphasis is here. The first is that he is a tender, loving father that is involved. He is not a earthly father. God, our heavenly father, is not an earthly father. But yet he's a father in the sense he's a perfect father who will always care for his children. So he is a father. Uh, the, in the original, the word that's used here is, is pater, and it was it was often, it was, it was used regularly. Now, Jesus spoke Aramaic, and in the Aramaic language, you probably have heard this, when, when, a, when a child would speak to his father, they would, they would use this word, um, Abba, Abba. In essence, it conveys a loving father. So you see God as, as a father, a loving father, a father that's involved. But in Matthew's version, of this prayer, he says, heavenly father. So it's two-sided in the sense that he is very much our father, but he is in heaven, meaning he's holy. He is set apart. He is unique. He's unlike anyone else. So there's a reverence there when we say father. It's understanding he belongs to us. We are his children, but he's also holy and in heaven and unique. The second thing Jesus prays as he, he teaches them to pray, hallowed be your name. And basically what this means is we want Jesus's, or excuse me, we want the father's name and who he is to be made known. I got it phrased here, his reputation, his reputation. We want the father, we pray, father, who you are, be made known. We want who you are to be known in our community, in our midst, in our life, in our family, in the things that surround us. When we say, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. We're saying, Father, make your name known. Because of who you are, we want the people around us to see you and to know you. Hallowed be your name. That's the second uh, petition here. And it's the second priority that Jesus teaches us to pray. The third priority is your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. This has a dual aspect. One is he's talking about the kingdom of God that, that was inaugurated with Jesus. When Jesus stepped on the scene, he was ushering in and beginning the, the new kingdom of God. There was a kingdom that was advancing in the hearts and life of the people that, that was being born again. It was a kingdom that, that, that God was advancing in, and it would manifest itself when you would see miracles, for example, or you would see people's um, lives change, or you would see people's professions and then lives change when they profess that Jesus was the son of God. I think of uh, this chosen, I don't know if you guys have been watching the chosen series, but I think one of the great things it does is it depicts as Jesus um, was calling different disciples and as Jesus was, was, was like moving into people's lives or the kingdom was advancing, you would see the manifestation of the kingdom in the, in the fact that their lives were changed. They would begin to follow Jesus. Their priorities changed. Well, the kingdom of God, when we say your kingdom come, we're saying, Lord, advance your kingdom, advance your rule advance your reign, but we're also saying your kingdom come. We want the father to consummate the kingdom, meaning we want to see the new kingdom in its full measure, and that will happen when Jesus returns. So when we say your kingdom come, we're saying, Lord, advance your spiritual rule and reign on earth as it is in heaven, and we're saying also, Lord, come and consummate the kingdom. Send Jesus Christ to return when he will set up the kingdom and then he'll hand it over to you. So that's the third priority. It's Lord, your kingdom come. The second is 
make your name known in our circumstances. And then the first is Father, our Father in heaven. Well, I'll speed through the last three. The first three are God-centered, I, I would say it that way, have to do with God. The last three priorities have to do with us. Um, in verse three, give us this day our daily bread. Basically, we're saying to the Lord, Lord, provide for us his provision. Lord, provide for our needs. Provide for the things that we need so that the kingdom can advance. Think about it this way. In our day and age, there's a lot of what we would call name it and claim it, where, you, where God wants you rich, God wants you wealthy. And I would say that Jesus teaches against this. Jesus teaches us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. As you know, in first century Palestine, many of the laborers were what they would, what would they be called? They were daily eight, uh, wage earners. They would work for the day. And at the end of the day, whoever was their boss or whoever was their, the business owner, they would pay them for the day. And so Jesus very much had this, this idea um, in mind, give us each day our daily bread. It's, it's praying for the things that we need, the necessities that we need for the, for the day uh, to live, but then to also live in light of the kingdom. And so as a church family, I think practically one of the ways we pray this is we go, Lord, provide for the needs of our church. Provide for the needs so that we can, as a family, proclaim and advance the gospel. And so I'm going to pause here. I've just shared three different, uh, three different priorities that the Lord teaches here. And I'd like for us to pray through them. Remember, the first is that we know in God is our Father. And I believe Anastasia is going to pray for that, representing one, um, our, our GCG at, at Sailboat Bay. And then the second priority was that God's name be made known through our church family. Tabitha is going to pray that. And then lastly, providing for our needs. KB is going to pray for that one. So let's go ahead now and church family, let's gather around and, and, and join our brothers and sisters as they pray for these three needs as Jesus calls us to pray. All right, Anastasia, you're up first and then Tabitha, and then KB. I'll be Anastasia today. <laughs> so let's pray. Uh, Lord, thank you for being so gracious to us, for allowing us in the midst of, uh, in the midst of difficulties we face in our church with, uh, with the COVID, to still be able to see each other, hear each other, and I ask you, Lord, and I'm, I'm thankful for that because not many people can do that these days. I praise the Lord for being our father, perfect father who never makes any mistakes, who gave us an amazing example in your word of what truly it means to be a father. I ask you to help us emulate that example, help us to grow in our thankfulness to you for who you are. Help us set a good example in our groups. Be a father to someone who does not have father in more than one way. I ask you to give us wisdom to understand your word deeper and to be, and to be our main encouragement whenever we have difficulties. Help us to grow more in encouraging each other in the knowledge of your word, in love for each other. I ask that in Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we, um, we come to you um, today, Lord, Heavenly Father. Um, we recognize you are hallowed, Lord. You are holy. You are our creator. You are our sustainer. Um, Lord, we praise you because you are worthy of being praised. Lord, we pray that you would help us to, to recognize um, the attributes of you, Lord, and help us to go out and show those and share those to others, Lord. 
Um, we praise you because you are worthy of being praised. Uh, we honor you and glorify you. We ask that you would just give us the words to speak to others that are around us, um, even in this difficult time, um, when it's it's a whole lot easier to stay shut up in our own homes than it is to get out sometimes um, for fear and and uh, worry and concern. Lord, just help us to to recognize the needs of others and help us to go out and meet those needs um, in your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The whole earth is filled with your glory. So God, we confess that it is by your grace we can approach the throne of grace. So we praise you for your uh, wondrous works and your mighty deeds, for your sovereign um, and, and providence in and over our lives, Lord. I just um, in, uh, in times of uncertainty, Lord, you are certain. You are the author of creation. You have authority over all creation. And that's good news to know that Donald Trump or Joe Biden or world leaders and dictators are not sovereign over it all. You are sovereign over it all. And we can, as your blood bought bride, we can trust in that. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is greatly to be praised. So God, we just pray that you would just shine in and through us as your church. You know, we just confess that we need you. We are dependent upon you. We cannot do the work of God apart from the power of the Spirit of God. So we confess that we need you. So, so God, we just, we just ask now that you just raise us up to be mighty ambassadors for your namesake uh, in such a time as this. Uh, and we just thank you for um, your provi uh, provision. And uh, I just pray that we would be a people who exalt you Amen. day by day. Amen. Pray all this in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, our time is getting away from us. And I just want to close. There are three more people who will pray these priorities that Jesus has given to us from the Father. Um, I've mentioned already, give us this day our daily bread. And what that means, the last two things are forgive us of our sins. In essence, this is speaking to our relationship with God the Father first, in that when we sin, it, it hinders our relationship. It doesn't expel our relationship because our relationship's based on the work and person of Jesus. We have a relationship because of what Jesus done. And maybe if you're listening here today, and you don't have a relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ, not based upon what you do, but based upon what he does, I want to I wanna invite you into that. I want you to hear the good news that Jesus lived for you the life that you could not live, and that, that his Father, God the Father, created you to have a relationship with himself. But we sinned against God the Father. We sinned against our Maker. And Jesus Christ, the second Adam, the one who had to come and live the life that we didn't live, and he had to die the death that we should have died. He, he died for us and in our place for our sins as a penalty for the wrong we did. God um, sent Christ to die for us so we could be forgiven of our sins and reconciled back to the Father. So, so the God the Father wants a relationship with you. And when Jesus says, pray this way, forgive us of our sins. It's not praying, um, Lord, I want to become a Christian again. It's no, Lord, I recognize that I've sinned against you. Forgive me. I want to be restored intimately with you. I want to be stored in our communion with you. See, when we sin, church family, when we sin as a family, it, it impedes our communion with the Lord because God is holy and he hates sin but yet he's given us a gracious way, a, gr a way of confession. And that's the beautiful thing. Is, and even as you guys know, we live in missional communities and, and live in, in missional communities and live in the life and in, in DNAs and living as a family. It's, I'm so glad we have this because we can confess our sin because we sin against each other often. But remember that our sin is first a sin against the Father so we must confess our sins there. But then 
forgive, for we ourselves forgive anyone who sin against us. When others sin against us, we recognize first that we've been forgiven. And then we're able to go to them and we're able to ask for forgiveness. That's a priority that we walk in what we would call repentance. We walk in confession of our sin. We walk in confessing when we've sinned against others. And that's a priority. And then lastly, it's his protection. It's lead us not into temptation. It's this prayer that God would protect us from the things that would tempt us to sin against him. This prayer is twofold in the sense that Lord protect us because we have certain proclivities. Um, All of us are drawn to sin in certain ways, but sin nonetheless. And so we pray, God, protect us. This is a daily prayer. This is a prayer that I'm learning to pray by the hour. Lord, protect me because I have certain tendencies, but protect us as a family. But it's also a prayer to protect us from the evil one because Satan, the devil, is scheming to get us to sin against God. So it's a twofold prayer of protection. Protect us from sin because we are born of Adam. We have a fallen nature that we wrestle with. But then also it's a, it's a prayer of protection against the evil one. So in summary, the Lord's prayer is a prayer of priority where he gives us three petitions that center around God and three petitions that help us to center our lives around God. And so these last three, um, Adele is going to pray for our provision as a church. Um, Jay is going to pray for the forgiveness of our sins, that we would be forgiven by the Father. He's going to pray a prayer confession for us. Um, And then Adam is going to close us out by praying a prayer of protection. And then we'll close here in a moment. So Adele, if you would start us off and then Jay and then Adam and church family, let's join in as they pray these prayers for our church family. Lord, we come to you today and we are in a really difficult place for a variety of reasons with the things that we see going on in this world. And we may be tempted to be frustrated or angry or critical. And Lord, I pray that instead, Lord, that, you know, you would just provide us with the grace and the mercy that we need to navigate each day and each moment. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to see others through the lens with which um, we see you because, Lord, we're all made in your image. We are all sinful, whether we have been restored in relationship to you or not, Lord. We all bear your image, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that you would just provide us the grace and the mercy to see everybody through that lens and help us to show love and provide us, Lord, with every single need that we 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 need. You know, you own the cattle on a thousand hills, Lord. And whether that need is the boldness to profess our faith or it's the commitment to be diligent in how we lead our families moment by moment, whether that is to reach out to the neighbor on the other side of us that doesn't believe we the way we do, Lord, whatever that need is of the moment of the day, Lord Jesus, give us that need and let us not be distracted or worried by needs of another day because you know, the Bible says today has enough worry for itself. Just help us to meet those needs, Lord, and to give you glory, Father God, in everything that we do. Help us to be quick to repent and to ask for grace and restore those relationships. Provide us with the wisdom to see when we've hurt others so that we can restore that relationship with them and with you, Lord Jesus. Just give us a constant, provide us with a constant posture of forgiveness and repentance, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. Father, we thank you for your forgiveness toward us. Lord, we we need it. We confess that we are a sinful people. God, we are thankful for the grace that is ours in Jesus Christ. God, I thank you that your forgiveness is unending. You don't, you don't get 
tired of us coming to you. We're not, we're not getting on your nerves when we come to ask you for forgiveness. That's, that's who you are. You, you forgive. It's in your, it's in your very nature. I think about the words of Jesus. He says, I'm gentle and lowly in heart. Lord, you, you long for us to come to you and to extend forgiveness to us. And so help us, God, not to, not to feel like we have to hide from you. To not feel like that if we come to you one more time and confess that you're going to finally write us off and say, I've had enough. That's, that's not who you are. You are a forgiving God and you, and you long for us to come to you. So give us, as KB said, the, the boldness to come to your throne of grace, knowing that we will find mercy in our time of need. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord Jesus, we come to you. Um, Lord, we just plead with you to protect us from sin, protect us from the evil one. It is in you we lift up our soul. It is in you we trust, Lord. Don't let us be put to shame. Don't let our enemy, the devil, triumph over us. Lord, we know that those who put their hope in you will never be put to shame. And Lord, we know that on the flip side, those who don't put their hope to you will. Lord, those who rebel against you and trample on your word will be put to shame without excuse. So, Lord, show us your ways. Teach us your path. Guide us in your truth. Jesus, you are God, our Savior. Lord, it appears now in our nation that we are facing your judgment. Lord, rightfully so. Lord, we're seeing that your hand of protection on this nation is being lifted. But Lord, we, your church, we just plead for you for your protection. Lord, may our enemies not rule over us. And Lord, that's what we're seeing today. And so, Lord, as in Israel, as in the days of Israel, the days of Isaiah, when they lifted up their hands, you wouldn't hear their prayer because it was covered with blood. But Lord, we don't come to you with hands covered in blood. We don't come to you with bulls and goats. Lord, we come to you with the precious blood of Jesus covered all, uh, over us. And Lord, we plead for your protection. Lord, we have cried out for your forgiveness. And Lord, we ask for you to forgive us for the shedding of innocent blood in our land. And Lord, we confess that we are guilty and we deserve your hand of protection to be lifted from us. But Lord, in repentance, we cry out for deliverance. We cry out for protection. Lord, we come boldly to you covered in the blood of Jesus, Lord, and we just pray for your protection over us as we, as the world is crumbling around us. Lord, may we not crumble with them. Lord, may we be that light, as John Winthrop said, a shining city on a hill. Lord, may we actually draw sinners to you, Lord, as, as they see us in this dark world. May they see the light of Christ. Lord, may they see us as we love our families, Lord. May, may they see that we are not crumbling and, and they ask, why are these, why is this family not crumbling? Why do they have such hope? Lord, may they see that in Convergence Church. Lord, protect us from that temptation to fall into fear and doubt and hopelessness, Lord. May we have that strength um, of Jesus in our bones, Lord. May they see us shining the light of Christ. Lord, protect us from temptation to doubt and to fear. Lord, protect us from the temptation to sin. Lord, protect us from the evil one. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Adam, for that prayer. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Adele. And church family, God is calling us to pray. And when we look at Luke 11, the Lord's prayer is a prayer. It's a priority prayer. So I want to just encourage us as we move forward, even into this week, and as we move into this year, posture yourselves. God is calling us to set, to set ourselves to pray, to set our sails so that as we pray, the wind of the Spirit could take these prayers and advance his rule and reign. Well, I'm going to pray, and then Carl's going to lead us in the Lord's Supper. Lord, we confess that we are not the type, we are not the people of prayer you called us to be. And we thank you for Jesus, who was the perfect one who prayed. And we know that one day when we go, when, when he returns, 
that we will become the perfect family that communes with you where there is never a moment where we don't commune. Father, forgive us for not praying as we should. Forgive us for centering our prayers around ourselves. We do ask you for these things, that we would know you as a father, that your name would be made known, that your kingdom would advance, that you would give us the resources so that your kingdom might advance, that you would forgive us in our life as a church family and forgive us as a people that have not emulated the gospel the way you've called us to where you have us and protect us, Lord. We pray this, your priorities, we pray in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen.